Hey Clashers, welcome back to another video, QSFN versus Indian Tribe. Let's jump into the first attack and we have Indian Tribe starting things off with the new Super Bowlers. That's super exciting to see them actually in use in pro play. I'm not really sure where their um, spot is just yet because I feel like sometimes they seem really weak. Sometimes they feel like really overpowering. So um, I don't know, I'm not really sure what exactly the final decision is going to be, but I feel like Sometimes Pekka Smash just feels more well-rounded. But let's see what this attack is going to show us. We have the Queen now walking alongside this um, air defense to take down the air defense. We have a really interesting army composition. Four Super Bowlers, a couple of supportive troops like a Witch, and a Dragon Rider as well. Dragon Riders just recently got nerfed. And this Dragon Rider is, uh, well, let's see how he's going to use that. Most likely for this Eagle, just to take that out just behind that Queen. There's now the Headhunter, there are the Super Bowlers, everything should now really easily take down this, um, yeah, this right compartment. And then the pathing to the core should be pretty good. At the same time though, since this is ranged troops, this is like the Super Bowler is your ranged main army, it's not going to be easy to funnel them. I feel like it's really good in like more, like it's either like a really, really compact open base or the other option, which is even better, it's like a, kind of like a really, a straight path for the super bowlers and not that big compartments so let's see how they're going to work on this one we have the blimp blimp is flying across there's the nato trap and this nato is actually making things a bit worse we have the defending queen in the core he can't use the freeze in the core which means one or two super bowlers actually went down in there because the yeti blimp had to and uh, he had to invest a couple of resources into this yeti blimp now there's only one super bowler left and well, that Zubola already is going down as well, but I feel like the main problem right now is there is no healer left in this in this army right now. No healers at all. Queen Ability can be used. Can the Royal Champion with that King together finish off the back end of this base? Is this going to work? He has one freeze, one invisibility spell. Can he somehow do it? Invisibility spell, ah, not really well placed because the Expo is going to be turned invisible as well. And now everything is turning on the last remaining heroes. The unicorn is running over from the queen. It's tanking right now. And now, wait a second, what is the royal champ doing? What is the royal champ doing? Maybe the freeze for the scatter? Freeze for the scatter? No, oh, he's waiting. He's waiting with the freeze. Not really sure if that was the best decision because this royal champ, yep, there's the giant bomb. No chance for this royal champion. And at this point, there is... There's nothing left which he can actually, like, protect with the freeze. So I'm not sure if that was the best decision on the freeze timing. But I feel like overall, the super bonus went down pretty quick. Especially in this compartment where they had the option of choosing three different compartments. One Inferno Tower, the other Inferno Tower, or just in between. And then all of the healers were gone within a second. That was just brutal base bidding right there. Really, really nicely done with this, um, yeah, just with the trap placement. Making sure those healers are gone within a second. And this is the first defense. 90% two star. And now we have QSFN going in with their next attack. Kitano coming in. We have, wait a second, three Earthquake Lalo. That's uh, interesting looking for sure. So let's see how he's going to, what exactly he's going to try. Okay, some rocket loons, maybe he's trying to damage some buildings so then finish them off with earthquakes or something. But well, typically, not really sure. Typically we see lightnings with that then maybe. I don't, I don't really know. No, I'm just really confused. Another, oh, is that a royal champion trick? Wait, is this going to work? Royal champion trick? No way, no way, the Bader Huts repairing up the Singing Furman Tower. This is super bad for him now. The Singing Furman Tower did not go down. The idea was really, really cool, but it did not pay out. Now the Queen, oh no, the King is too early. The King is too early. And with this, the Queen is going the wrong way. This is really bad news for Gitano. He has now the Queen on the wrong side. Oh, invisibility. Queen, why are you going for this wall? What are you doing right there? This is unfortunate, so unfortunate, which means now the king has to do something on his own. But to be honest, this was completely on him, sadly. Placing the king too early, making sure the queen is going the wrong way. He needs those buildings to actually lure over the queen, but instead the king was a little bit too early and that completely destroyed this. He wanted to take down the entire left compartment to play like a lot around the top side. That would be my guess. But now with the single phone tower left alive, with the complete left side still alive, like this is not going to be an easy Lalo at all. But he has the blimp with him. And since this town hall compartment is like just like circled 
in like with the walls everything this means there can't be any traps around this town hall which then around is giving like a really good move for like an <clears throat> a hound sneaky goblin combination because there can't be any traps right like this town hall with the safety like this is not even a safety blip needed because you just can combine one hound with five sneakies let's see if he's going to do that but there's the blimp there's the nato as well he has to try to hit everything with the with this warren ability there's the rage there's the warren ability protecting bruce the scatter shot the blimp is flying and yep is it what is going to be in there and yeah it is as i said the sneaky goblins the town hall is going to be taken down within seconds and the lava hound is tanking as well a little bit but at the same time the back end scatter the back end royal champion are looking scary on this right side and i feel like if this entry would have oh wait oh wow that was so close with those red mines coming up was incredible close but those loons are making it collecting a couple of more percentages but three stars are not going to be in reach which means this is going to be another defense i don't know what's going on but this already means we have two defenses but so far, it seems like Indian Tribe might have the better percentage. 83 for now for Gitano on QSFN. And they get a couple of more percentages. 84. Is it going to be 85? Maybe with this Expo going down, that would be nice. So it's only 5% different. Yep, it's going to be a 5% different difference after the first two attacks. So next attack is going to be in. And we have... What are we have? Okay, we have a Queen Charge Dragon Rider attack, which is going to be really cool to watch because I'm still looking forward to see like how strong those Dragon Riders actually are. Because I see, like, I tried them on my own, and I feel like Dragon Riders got a huge hit. The Queen Charge now really needs to work. So I feel like, I feel like most of the time, if you actually can execute Lalo, Lalo seems way better because Lalo is just so much more quicker. Um, at the same time, if the Queen Charge is going wrong, Dragon Riders are still like more likely to 3-star if something is going wrong. So let's see if how those Dragon Riders are going to be used. Starting off with the Blimp, which means no Slammer with those Dragon Riders, which most of the time is giving like, them the true power. Because the Slammer can tank, and then the Loons from the Slammer can tank as well, which is incredible having those Loons flying in front of those Dragon Riders. But now, so far it's looking good. The Blimp did, the, uh, did it work. Which means the blimp is creating this funnel, this pathing for the queen. He has one jump to get from Mutant Fern Tower to Mutant Fern Tower. And then let's see where he's going to exactly send in everything else. I guess the king for the town hall then. Um, this means the royal champ for the bottom scatter shot because the queen cannot reach it. <clears throat> but then the dragon rose from the top. It's going to be kind of the sweeper, but still. Okay, maybe he's protecting those healers. And then the royal champ just in. That jump makes no sense whatsoever. That jump is... What? He's open to the scatter. What? Why? Why is he not jumping towards the Mutant Fern Tower? This is confusing me so bad. Like, I don't get it, to be honest. Like, the jump from Mutant to Mutant would have been so much better. Now the king for the tunnel, as we kind of predicted. Is the Royal Champion now going to be used for the bottom compartment? No, it's... It. What is the plan? I'm so confused. I feel like... the What? Those Dragon Riders make no sense what's... Like, why would you send them over there? Because you're cutting off your Queen. The Queen is jumping now with how he plays the um, jump spell. It's going to jump into the um, scattered compartment. And she's useless. She's useless from this point on. She can only beat some walls. The Dragon Riders are taking over, which is great. But at the same time, like... They are pretty much useless at this point. So really surprising. Let's see if that's going to work though. He has the scatter on the back and he has the sweeper. Which he tried to avoid apparently. So let's see if that Royal Champ with those uh, with those um, Dragon Riders can somehow make some work. But he needs to take down this Defending Queen. There is the Headhunter coming. But he has no spells left. This, center is go this Headhunter is going to die versus this back end. And this means there's nothing, nothing really which can take down the defending queen. So, surprise, I really like the entry. I really, really like the entry and what he did. But he had to get started from the top side. Maybe even Hawk Riders. But the queen charge overall was really, really good. But then just the follow up really surprised me. But yeah, we just see like the defending queen's just taking down every single dragon rider. So, yeah, really, really unfortunate right there. Or surprising. I don't know how to, how to name this. But either way, this is going to be another defense. This time, another defense for QSFN. Now, can QSFN push ahead? They really need to get this lead and really get this war going. We have the next attack in. This is going to be Leo. And he is coming in with the Queen George Hybrid. The strategy which everyone's hyped for that there are the new levels. So Hybrid is back for sure. It is quite strong. But still, 
If there are the trap placed nicely against the hybrid, you as an attacker have no chance whatsoever to save this because spring traps are just so powerful. So let's see if Leo can save this and can bring QSFN into the right direction. There's the hound, there's the hog rider going, luring out the hound. That was a brilliant move, luring out this hound, because this means he is engaging that hound. But nothing else is on this queen, which means there is no rage needed, there is nothing really needed, and he actually brought normal wall breakers as well, which is giving him power to use then sneaky to funnel, um, using obviously the rocket loons. But with this, uh, he had only those couple of wall breakers in the beginning, charging now into the town hall. He's trying to get into this compartment behind the town hall with the open wall right there, so he does not need any more wall breaks. And then getting that king on the far right side and hybrid in between. This is how things are looking like. I feel like if the king is not getting forced inside the Xbox compartment, this hybrid pathing would be too wide. But let's see. Well, let's see what Leo is going to do. He's a really good queen charge attacker. There's the king coming in. Is he going to try to force the king inside or is the king going inside on its own? Okay, there is the hawk rider and Siegeberg's combination to force the king inside. There's the invisibility spell to get the queen further inside the space. And... There's the hybrid going in between, and the pathing looks great. At the same time, though, the pathing looks a bit sketchy into the core Mutant Fern Tower with the, with the sweeper, maybe. But at the same time, there's the defending king later. So let's see. The nader trap is messing up a little bit, and there's a lot of spring traps already, which means those ho um, hogs and miners and everything are not having the best day. The healers with that queen are actually going down. The warden ability got used. And not really sure if that's going to work on this base. There are the reinforcement hawk riders coming in from the siege barracks. But can they take down the bomb tower? Otherwise the bomb tower is going to stay alive. The defending queen is still alive as well. The attacking queen is going down because the healers went down. So now with the hybrid, can he still make this work? Is this still like a hybrid thing? Like back in 2013, we were always, like the queen charge always went wrong. We were just saying... It's, it's fine, it's hybrid, right? It's like hybrid can steal 3 star, but I feel like on this one with the back end scatter, no spells left whatsoever, nothing to really deal with this defending queen. Now finally the royal champion is engaging their queen, but with the expo, with the defending scatter shot, this is so scary. This expo level brought the defense on a new level in my opinion, which is really, really cool, because this expo can game change those queen charges and back end heroes. We have seen so many air attacks already, which really struggle to keep their heroes alive with those expo levels so that's really really cool to see this one is going to be another defense so so far both teams are zero out of two which means four stars to four stars this match is incredible close so let's see who is going to get the first three star and we have the next attack live and we have Ketano being the defender and this one is going to be another queen charge hybrid let's go we have the Queen Charge in from the bottom side. There's the Signal Fern Tower, so we really, he really needs to be careful with this Queen Charge. But at the same time, as he's... Like, if the pathing is set and is getting his Queen into the um, Inferno Tower, things are looking good for him. So let's see if that's going to be the case. Either way, Queen Charge is in. There is the Air Skeletons coming in as well. There's another Test Loon coming in. What is he going to do? Is he going to... Yeah, is he is going to use the invisibility spell because this invisibility spell can't be used for the hybrid. So getting the invisibility spell out of the way early is a good thing. Now, where is the queen going? She might go towards the left side. This is what he's anticipating. But wait a second. She's just going completely in the different direction. Now, this queen has to step inside the expo compartment like this area in front of the town hall and then has to step into the town hall which means this gold uh, this elixir storage needs to go down the elixir storage on the four o'clock side needs to go down otherwise this queen is going to backtrack and it's going to be gone never come back to towards that town hall so this elixir storage, yep it's going down which means the queen should eventually go towards the tunnel that's exactly what is going to happen now the clan castle is coming out the inferno beams everywhere from the town hall from the inferno towers everywhere are those inferno beams can he make this work double bomb tower on the far side of the town this is something which we kind of like expected with hybrid being a meta strategy then again because those back end bomb towers can be really scary for those hawks and everything but so far he has done a great job of handling those Queen is still not getting that town. That town needs to go down. That town really needs to go down. It's getting heat up again from this bitter. Another freeze. But the town already. The town did so much damage. That's just incredible. 
Is the scatter on the backhand going down? Yes, with the Royal Gem ability. The expo on the backhand is still there as well. The queen is getting engaged from that king, but has her ability to protect herself. Is this going to work? We have the king with the yak. We have an army of wizards on this left side following that king. The warden is tanking right now. We have 40 seconds left. Wait a second. If he's waiting for the wall break, if he's going to clear out the compartment, which means Argent Tower and Elixir Collector, he can wall break into the Inferno Tower. This can still work. The Elixir Collector needs to go down. Then we have the wall break. Where is the wall break? There we go. Wall break perfectly into the Inferno Tower compartment with 22 seconds left. Time is ticking, but this could be the first we start off this match. He's using the loon from the complete other side of the base. There's the Sneaky Goblin running inside as well. Sneaky Goblin is get, like is making it. And guys, this is going to be the first three-star of this match. Queen Shot Hybrid is getting it done. It was close, but the three-star is what matters at this point. So next attack, and we have now Giovanni coming in for the attack. And this one is going to be a Pekka Smash. No Super Bowlers whatsoever. We have only seen one of them so far in this match. Ooh, okay. Queen Shard is going to be planned to take down not the... We have another Dragon Rider. Okay, so the Queen Shard is supposed to walk around the Eagle, going from the right side, and then just full charge towards the Town Hall. Wait a second. Those Tesla can mess up things really bad. Yep. Oh, no. Queen is backtracking. Queen! What are you doing? Queen, come on. Come on, Queen. This... Aww. Oh. Uh, okay, now the queen is charging the eagle. At least that means that he has the dragon rider left for something else. Um, could be, to be honest, it could not be really, really worse because um, that's already that sucks because uh, well, this is completely messing up the pathing. This is messing up the momentum. This is completely messing up everything. So, ooh, he needs that three star. He really needs that three star. Otherwise, QSFN. Having barely any... I mean, there's a couple of more attacks left, but still, it's not going to be easy at all. There's the connection wall break to get the queen on the side on the same page as the Pekka Smash. King is funneling, and there's the first jump. How is he going to follow up? King is walking inside. The Super Wizards, though, are they going to walk inside? I don't see that, to be honest. The Yuck is opening up the next wall, which means maybe the Super Wizards are going to take that opening from the Yuck. That would be pretty cool. They should walk inside, right, with the Pekka funneling. What? That yuck is insane. That yuck opening up the compartment for the Super Wizards. So everything is now joining up again. He's trying to keep that queen alive. But he has to use the ability at this point. So is he even going to get that second star? That's the big question. He's trying to rage aggressively. But those healers really need to follow. Really need to make work. And somehow keep those troops alive. There the Hawk is coming in. No bomb tower yet seen on the path of those Hawk Riders. A couple of Pekka around the outside. He has 55 seconds left. There's the Royal Champion coming in. There's a nice backhand freeze onto the Town Hall. But he has no spells left at this point. Is this going to be enough for the Town Hall? The Queen has no ability left anymore. Royal Champion, yeah. But there are ground skeletons coming up and popping up and being annoying. With that Royal Champion shield, I think he should get the at least 2 star. But 3 star, I think, is out of reach. Been staying alive a little bit further, but this this getter, this getter is just taking the HP non-stop. And there's the red bomb farm onto the healers. Wait a second, are those red bombs? Are there more red bombs? I feel like that's pretty much it. Can he still do this? He has 18 seconds left, and time is ticking. Time is ticking non-stop. More red bombs are getting low. More red bombs are chasing this one lonely minion. This means the healer's staying alive, but time is going to be the deciding factor on this one. And this is another defense. I don't know what exactly is going on, but this, this match is incredible. So close. Only one three-star and a couple of percentage are being the difference right now. So let's take a look at the at, like so far the result we see. We have a really, really small percentage lead for Indian Tribe. And obviously the one star. So if Indian Tribe is going to get another three-star, another Queen Charge Hybrid, they would get a huge boost into this. So... Let's see if he can somehow make this. It is going to be the Queen Charge Hybrid into the tunnel compartment. Something which I always hate to do because it is so scary. A NATO trap, black mines, red bomb farm, whatsoever. Every single one can completely mess up your entire attack. So 
Looking forward to see if he can keep his queen alive against the sweeper, against two ground expos and the scatter. <laughs> That's not going to be easy. This has to be really, really tough, right? Especially against the newly maxed out um, expos. We talked about that. Expos are so... Oh, and the trip. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is going to be scary. He had to use the queen ability already. He has one rage left at this point. A couple of freezes. He is just starting off with his hybrid because he needs to somehow get this tanking going for his queen because the sweeper and this this ice cream is going to freeze the healers this ice cream the freeze the freeze on offense but the queen the queen has she has to stay alive she's trying to take down some more buildings but the scatter shot the scatter shot is still on that queen she's stepping one step further and this means the defending queen is taking her down. But now one thing is happening, which is really cool in hybrid, is the healer switch. Never underestimate an attack where the healers are switching. This is such a strong thing. And this is the big difference between off Queen Charge Lalo and Queen Charge Hybrid. On ground, you have the possibility of those healers switching and still being useful. Can he push this through the back end queen again? Like in an attack earlier, might be the deciding factor. But still, like there is a lot of troops going. But this is one of the last heal spells. He has one heal spell left. One heal spell left to place. And that's it. One scatter as well. Two more time for our towers. This is not going to be easy at all. And those healers. Are you kidding? This P.E.K.K.A. is full HP. You stupid healers. It's full HP. Why are you not switching? This is so unfortunate. Now there's the more time for our tower beam on the P.E.K.K.A. Which obviously then makes sense not to switch. But at the same time, there's so many there were so many miners. And the last year spell won't make such a difference. So this means it's going to be another defense, another two-star on this one. The town hall charges, as I said, are so, so scary. Especially with those new expo level, that can be so devastating. So I feel like we're going to see less and less of those Rocket Loon and Super Mini Clan Castle. Because the Clan Castle, the job so far has been like, you have to force the Queen ability. You have to put off the damage and force spells. But at this point, that's not needed anymore because the defensive now is strong enough with this new expo level to do that on their own. Like, that's not needed. So, QSF and is in the loop zero. If someone is there, if someone is in this team to give this QSFN team a chance of a comeback, it is loop zero. The MVP pretty much of QSFN of this last qualifier. He has done incredible with those Lalo attacks and he's... Oh my goodness, he is going in with the Skelly Donut. Let's go, Skelly Donut for the Clan Castle, for the Scatter. And this is looking good. This is looking really good, guys. This Clan Castle, this Scatter is going down. He's doing the job. And now let's see what is going to be the follow-up. He's going to split up his series for sure. Yep, Queen for the Town Hall. And then, I don't know, King for the bottom Scatter? I feel like this top Inferno Tower might look good as well, but... He's having different plans. I'm the last I should get asked when it comes down to Lalos and Hero Dives. This is probably my worst thing. What I could do in, in um, Pleasure of Glance. So let's see. Early Queen ability to pop that Town Hall. And then we have Royal Champion and King. There's not too many giant bombs around this bottom side. At least like the Barbarians are tanking nicely so far. Can this Queen now take down the single front tower as well? That would be huge. At the same time, the Yak with that King together is going for the wall. And they can even take down another air defense and the defending Royal Champion. I don't know. if It feels like Loop Zero has like level 100 heroes already. This is just incredible how powerful they are. Royal Champion just keep pushing through. And now we have the Slammer opening up as well. The Lalo is starting in from that top side, it seems like. Yep, there's the Lalo going with that early warning ability. Another Ice Hound coming in as well. And now the Lalo should just overpower this base, right? There's two Ice Hounds. There's the one Freeze. The one Ice Hound for the back end for freezing up the air defense and the Expo. That should be doable. There's the Tornado Trap, though. Wait a second. Can he... Is this... Yeah, that should, be, that should be okay, right? Like, he has so many loons left. And obviously, the invisibility spell, if he needs to do something about that. There's the ice sound still, like, flying across. Oh, yeah, there's one ice sound still left. Yeah, that should be fine with another thousand loons coming in from the back and making the ward invisible to keep him alive. And that is such an overkill. That is a loop zero Lalo right there. Really, really clean. And this means they are back together. Both teams are on the same level right now. It's 9 to 9. 
I think we should really check out the percentage because it is so close right now. It is such a close match. So let's check it out quickly. 9 to 9, but the percentage is in favor of QSFN. Can they take this home now? Can they finish off this match? But Indian Tribe is first. And if they 3 star, they are forcing QSFN to 3 star as well because the percentage does not matter. First, it's the stars. So we have a Yeti blimp in. We have a Yeti blimp in. We remember this base from the qualifier, obviously the entire Tesla farm being at the 10 o'clock side. So, wow, what a Yeti Blimp. Those Yeti Blimps are incredible now. They can take down so much. They took down uh, the Warden, the multi Tower, and the Eagle. That is, that is just so much value right there for a Yeti Blimp. Incredible. We have now a really early Royal Champion, and we have Dragon Riders for the back end. We have seen already Dragon Riders today from uh, Indian try but it was not that successful to be honest so let's see if they can now make it better this time the royal champion with those sneakies are going to take down the defending queen the wizard at the bottom side is funding there's the king on offense as well defending headhunters are coming out the timing should be okay to take them out without a freeze or a poison now the queen should step up to take down the clan castle fully. multi tower not on the healers yet that's really important yes one jump as well to get further into the base the question though is, where is he going to come in with those Dragon Riders? Maybe from the far top right side. That might be an option. There's the jump spell to get into the multi Tower in the core. But this left side, like the Cannon, the Elixir Collector and the Air Defense, they might really screw him up pathing-wise because they make his Queen now path through it. Oh, wait a second. A ton of traps were just getting triggered right there. And now we have the Freeze. We have to make sure that our Sealers are staying alive. There are the Dragon Riders now. The tunnel already went down. We have the rage early on to take down the defending royal champion as well and get those dragon riders faster into this base. The queen is keep trying staying alive. The back and air defense has been taken down. The queen has her ability to left, which she has to pop really soon. There's the queen ability. Queen ability taking down the um, expo. And now can she jump? She can reach that inferno tower as well. And this is now looking really good for any clashes they could force. QSFN to 3 star in their last attack, otherwise QSFN would lose. Queen is keep going strong, he has around 50 seconds left, the Dragon Riders are going strong as well. There is nothing left in this base which can actually take down the Dragon Riders, except obviously a couple of Black Mines, but they already um, traveled all the distance on the right side, so that should be totally okay. And this is going to be the second 3 star for Indian Tribe in this matchup. This means QSF and they have to 3 star. If they 3 star this last attack, they are going to win this matchup. Everything else, like a 2 star 99, everything else is going to be not enough. And we have P. Castro coming in with Packer Smash. Okay, we have the Packer Smash and we have the Warden Walk for the Town Hall. Since we have the Earthquake, this is really like a pretty safe that the Warden Walk is going to be for the Town Hall. Otherwise, in my opinion, it makes no sense to bring the Earthquake. The Earthquake typically is just like damage the Town Hall. That's the first thing. And second of all, damage all of the Bitter Huts which are staying around. With this fact, the Bitter Huts are going to repair themselves and not the Town Hall. What this does is, with one race, you should be pretty safely take down the Town Hall without any problems. So that's exactly what it's about, what he's about to do. So as the yep there's now the earthquake first off it's damaging bursting down the town hall hp and then you can see the bitter huts or some other on some other buildings and not on the town hall. this is kind of the key thing with this small trick now the queen he's using one pack as well to lure over the warden and now he's trying to charge it like push into this channel which does not seem to be easy but let's see we have the king wait is the king coming back he should get lured back into the skelly trap and there's the Siege Sparks as well. And now the P.E.K.K.A. push is going in. I feel like the P.E.K.K.A. were placed a bit too early. Be oh no, because, yep, exactly that is happening. They are getting rotated into the base. And he's going in against the Sweeper. This is really not a good move because the Sweepers keep pushing back the healers. And they are never going to transition over to the P.E.K.K.A. And those P.E.K.K.A. are having a rough time. They're supposed to tank, right? They're supposed to be tanky. But at this point, there is no P.E.K.K.A. left. There is no P.E.K.K.A. left in the main army. Only the P.E.K.K.A. with the king together. But that's not the P.E.K.K.A. which you are looking for. You're looking for some tankiness. Something to make sure that your troops are getting through the core. And now those Hawk Riders. There are a couple of Red Bombs as well. But those Hawk Riders have to take down the multi Fern Tower. They should be able to do that. There's the heal spell. Jumps over for the Queen. And 
No! There's the Spring Trap. Spring Trap's taking down the Hawks. Nolte Fern Tower is not going down. He has invested a heal spell to take down. Oh, is it? Wait a second. Is the Nolte Fern? No, the Bitter Hut. The Bitter Hut. Bitter Hut is repairing up the Infern Tower and it keeps saying, oh no. Last second it went down, but still, at this point, it's not good. And the. Oh no, and the Headhunters were swagged as well. This is not going to be a three star for Picastro, and this is going to be the defense for Indian Tribe. And this means. This is going to be a win for Indian Tribe in this incredible close match. And that's a surprising score. And really looking forward to see if this is going to be the meta at some point. If it's going to be more base, uh, like more defense heavy a little bit. Obviously, we know those pro pages. They are just incredible with their offense. So we know maybe something more like 12 stars on average, not 13 like we had in the history, like in the past so far. But either way, this is going to be an 11 to 12 a really low score match. But it's something cool to watch as well. GG's to both teams. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys back tomorrow. Until then, and bye-bye.